In this video, we're going to show you how to replace a water pump on your Toyota Tacoma. This will be located behind the fan. Let's get started. Using a 12 millimeter socket, remove the rear skid plate bolts. These are supposed to have welded nuts on top. These are very common to rust out. Our bolts are spinning. There's a nut up top, so we're going to put a wrench on it and remove the bolt. Remove all four bolts for the skid plate. Toyota has these hooks in the front to hold the skid plate so you don't get bonked. Lift up, remove the skid plate. Be sure you have a drain bucket under you before you open up the petcock for the radiator. Using a pair of pliers, or if it's not too tight, you can just use your fingers. Open up the drain for the radiator. Let the coolant start to drain. Once your coolant's done draining, Go ahead and close the petcock. Using a 10 millimeter socket, loosen the negative terminal for the battery. Remove the negative battery terminal. Put this off to the side where it won't make contact with the negative terminal. Using a large flat blade screwdriver, we're going to hold the fan pulley still while we use a 12 millimeter socket or wrench to loosen the fan bolts. Using a 14 millimeter wrench, we're going to take the tension off of the tensioner, pull the belt off, we're going to leave the belt on the bottom for now, remove the nuts from the fan. We're going to take all of the nuts off except one. Using a pair of clip pliers, we're going to remove the plastic clips for our top trim piece. There should be four more clips on this lower part. Remove the trim piece. Remove the overflow hose from the radiator. Remove the 10 millimeter bolts on either side for the fan shroud. Remove the last nut for the fan. Pull the fan forward. Pull the shroud and fan out of the vehicle. Remove the fan pulley. Fully remove the belt. Using a 14 millimeter socket, we're going to get on the tensioner. We're going to push the tensioner down, push it down out of the way. Using a 10 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the bottom bolt for the water pump. You'll have to keep tension on the tensioner while doing this. Remove the bolt. Continue going around, removing all of the 10 millimeter bolts. There's one located right under this pulley.
remove the two 12 millimeter bolts. Before removing the water pump, be sure you have a collection bucket under you. Some coolant will come out. Pull the water pump forward, let the coolant start draining, and remove the water pump. Using a razor blade, we're gonna go around and clean the old water pump gasket off of the ceiling surface. We don't want to mar the surface or scratch it. We just want to clean off the old gasket. Go around the whole surface doing this process. We're going to wipe out any gunk that got into the water pump area. Using a piece of very fine sandpaper, we're going to go over the ceiling surface and just give it a wipe down. Go around the whole surface doing this. Using some brake parts cleaner and a clean rag, we're going to spray our rag and wipe down our mating surface. Install the gasket onto the water pump. We're going to get this lined up. Before installing, I'm going to put one or two of the bolts through the gasket, through the water pump. Install the water pump and gasket. Get the bolt started, being sure that they are seating through the gasket. Pull that tensioner out of the way, get the bolt installed behind it. If any of your bolts came out with RTV on them, we recommend cleaning the bolts, re-RTVing them, and installing them. I have my bolts cleaned off and re-RTV'd. Get them installed. Go around and snug down all of the bolts by hand. Torque the 10 millimeter head bolts to 80 inch pounds. Torque the 12 millimeter head bolts to 15 foot pounds. Install the supplied studs into the water pump. We're putting the short threaded side into the water pump. This longer side will attach to the pulley. To tighten these studs down, you could use two nuts back to back, tighten them onto each other, and then use those to 
tighten the stud down or you can use a stud installer. We're going to get these studs nice and snug. Install the belt around the crank and the AC compressor. Install the fan shroud and the fan. Push the fan shroud down into the bottom. It'll clip into the bottom. And then we'll pull it forward on the top, install the fan onto the studs, and get a nut started. Install the 10 millimeter bolts on either side for the fan shroud. Snug the bolts down. Get the rest of the nut started for the fan. Snug the nuts down. Using a flat blade screwdriver to hold the fan pulley, we're going to use our 12 millimeter wrench and get our bolts torqued to 18 foot pounds. If you can't get a torque wrench in there, do the best you can. We're going to torque these in a cross pattern. Install the belt. You can follow the diagram on the screen. We're going to leave our alternator pulley as the last pulley to put the belt on. Be sure that the belt is sitting in all of the correct grooves and on all of the correct flats. Take some tension off of the tensioner. Get the belt fully installed. Install the overflow hose onto the radiator. Be sure it's fully seated. Install the radiator cover. Install the clips. And there should be four more going to the radiator shroud. Ours are missing. Install the negative battery cable. Snug it down. Completely fill the radiator with coolant. We have a coolant funnel installed on ours. With the radiator completely full, we'll start our car and we'll wait for all of the bubbles to run out. Once the coolant is done bubbling, we can remove our coolant funnel and install the radiator cap. Install the skid plate onto the two bolts. Push it back into place. Get the front bolt started. Snug down the bolt. Do the same thing on the other side. Torque the front bolts to 25 foot pounds. And you're good to go. 
when only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.